what are circular business models? Thanks, Rose. So circular business models for us are models that, in a sense, generate revenue without producing or using any more natural resources. So in a sense, they make more money without making more products. So that for us is this uh, definition of a circular business model. I can see the benefits of me repairing my clothes to make them last longer, for example, but what's better about circular business models um, and say a model like rental, for example? Yeah, that's a great question. So repairs and rental are different in the way that they increase use. So the first one repairs is, as you just said, you repair your clothes so then you can use it for longer. Whereas rental is increasing the use of clothes by rotating it through different people. So different ways, but they can have the same outcome as long as at the end of the day, that person, so you, buy less clothes. Um, if, if they achieve in doing that, then great, they are a circular business model because they are not coupled with uh, producing more new products. So with all the circular business models that are currently mainstream at the moment, are they all actually circular? Um, okay, no. So right now, they are not all environmentally beneficial, let's say. Um, and that's because there are quite a few challenges in the system. The first one being that the way that success is measured in most companies um, is still very much linear. And that means that the more they sell, the more profitable they are. Um, and that's how they are wired right now. And that means that um, they are not motivated, companies are not motivated right now to really shift away their customers from one business to another. Uh, and that means that at the end of the day, people are still buying or incentivized to buy more new clothes. Another one is product design, because most of the way that products are designed right now, or most of the products that already exist, haven't been designed for uh, this system where they are going to be used more and for longer. Um, so for example, in a rental model, if you can only rent it three times and then it breaks, then that rental model is not going to be economically viable and neither environmentally viable because you could only get, you know, three, you can only get like the worst for, from three different people. Um, so it wouldn't get their maximum value out of it. So do all these resale and rental models achieve what you just said, do they make us buy less clothes? No, and that's a tricky bit because it is super important that they do um, because 70% of the greenhouse emissions happen in the upstream part of the, of the whole process of the value chain. And that means that it's on the fiber production and the manufacturing phase. Um, so we really need to reduce the overall volume of clothes being made for, as a result of these models. And what's happening right now is that these models are creating a lot of revenue sometimes, and that's proven by how many of them have become unicorn in the last three years. Um, however, what is harder to prove is that they actually, that as a result of that, we are producing less clothes overall. Um, and in order to really get there, and hopefully we're going to see some of that afterwards, is that um, we really need to rethink how performance is being measured in a business and how the customers are incentivized to really not buy more clothes. So to incentivize to use these circular business models as the one and only way that they access fashion.